It's 6.30 p.m. in all 10 regions of the country. You're watching the 6.30 Prime News on my media prime. My name is Genda Belgium Blanche King. It's one day after the ghastly motor accident that wiped away over 53 souls around the Chang Hill. Cameroonians are still mourning their debts and counting their losses. The governor of the West Region, Awa Fonka Augustine, has paid a visit to the 29 survivors of the Gasly Road accident, which occurred yesterday. He assured the injured of proper medical uh, treatment, transmitting consolatory message from the head of state. Details with Nora Kakebi. The head of state has in a message sent condolence words to families of those who perished in the Gasly Road accident along the Sancho Chang stretch in the early hours of Wednesday, January 27. The same message was equally transmitted to the 29 survivors currently responding to treatment in some hospitals in Chang and Bafosan. Our Fonka Augustine, governor of the West Region, was a bearer of the president's condolence message. The governor visited the injured victims at the Chang District Hospital and the Bafosan Regional Hospital and took some time off to comfort each of the victims on their hospital beds. About uh, 3 30 a.m. this morning, there was a head on collision between uh, a 70 seater bus belonging to Menwa Voyage coming from uh, Douala heading towards Chang, as well as uh, a mini truck uh, that was uh, carrying uh, fuel heading towards the opposite uh, direction. As a result, the both vehicles caught fire, and uh, as of now, we've registered 53 dead and uh, 29 persons seriously uh, wounded with second degree burns. They have respectively been carried to uh, the regional hospital in Bafusam as well as the district hospital in Chang for the wounded and for those who are dead. Uh, they are not identified because. Uh, uh, Given the circumstances, they were all burnt. So there is one thing that, first of all, around this area to about uh, 3 a.m., uh, it's cloudy. And secondly, of, uh, found out that with uh, the mini truck, uh, it had uh, a problem of uh, brake failure. The bus driver, Kana Rene, on his part, managed to explain his own side of the story and how he miraculously survived the accident. As soon as I started ascending the hill, I reduced speed as it should be in those areas. Then at a bend, I saw a truck coming down the opposite direction on high speed. He left his side of the road and bumped into us. I just saw flames. I was traumatized. I don't even know how I came out. This other survivor equally explained his ordeal. My colleagues are in the area, mm -hmm. they are distracted. Yes. They are able to get them some things. Oh, okay. They are playing the small bodies. Mm -hmm. So I look around the corner. It should be noted that all those wounded in this unfortunate incident are being taken care of by the government and the Ministry of Transport is expected to make a declaration after receiving results of the findings already prescribed. A student has allegedly lost her life after consuming what is believed to be a rat poison. Um, before her demise leaked, WhatsApp messages confirmed she consumed the, the substance after asking from friends whether or not she would die if she consumes it, stating it is part of a condition. Details with Audrey Zatza. Joki Hana Judith, the first year student from the University of Chang had inquired from her friends via the social media platform WhatsApp about different kinds of poison she could use and if rat poison was dangerous for humans hours before taking away her life. Curious of her inquiries, her friend, as seen on messages, sought to know the reasons for her interest in poisons and the concern retorted that it was a task given her, a task still unclear, but Hannah would later be found dead after consuming rat poison. Reports have it that Hannah's parents, informed of the death of their daughter, immediately took the road to Chang two days ago and are amongst the victims of the tragic incident at the Chang Sanchu Cliff 
which has caused the lives of 53 persons and 29 injured. A tragic incident leading to another in a soul family. The situation has left internet users in shock, with many wondering on the happenings in the country. We now talk about protests carried out by residents of the Denver neighborhood in Bonamusa di Douala on the construction of a new snack bar. The savior security will be at risk should this happen. Gladys Bomotongina compiled the following in the French language. Projection de construction d'un espace de relaxation à type snack bar et grillade au quartier Denver à Bonamoussadi crée la polémique chez les habitants de cette localité qui trouvent le projet inconfortable du point de vue sécuritaire, l'outissement et bien d'autres. On ne peut pas installer les boîtes de nuit, les bars partout. Ça n'a aucun sens. C'est moi, il y a seulement une boîte ici, mais tu ne peux pas rentrer ici à une certaine heure. Tu te fais agresser. Alors si on ouvre ici, il n'y aura plus de vide. Les gens vont se faire agresser ici à leur point finir. Il faut préciser qu'il y a quelque temps de cela, le préfet du Vouri a suspendu au travers d'une note ce même type de travaux de réalisation dans cette zone. Munis donc de leur pancarte et prêts à revendiquer leurs droits, ces derniers protestent contre le désordre urbain, la nuisance sonore et l'insalubrité. Ils en appellent au gouvernement pour la restitution de leur sécurité. Nous, nous sommes en train de manifester pour faire comprendre aux autorités supérieures que nous ne sommes pas contents. Il va falloir qu'on nous restitue notre sécurité. L'espoir de ces derniers reste attaché au fait que les autorités porteront définitivement à cœur leur plainte cette fois et stopperont définitivement la réalisation de ce type de projet dans ce secteur. Over to the northwest region of the country, the mayor of Bamenda II Council, Peter Chengui, accompanied by his councillors, has urged quarter heads to embark on participatory developments as it presented to the council development plans for the municipality within the new laws of decentralization. He equally called on all the boys in the bushes to drop down their arms and uh, stop or possible, possibly stop the ongoing socio-political crisis rocking the two English-speaking regions of the country. Charles Kewa reports from the Northwest region. The mayor of Bamenda II Council, Mayor Peter Chenwe, accompanied by his councillors in a come together with quarter heads of the Bamenda II municipality at Ayaba Hotel, 26 January 2021, presented the council development plan of the municipality, projects realized in 2020 and projects marked for 2021 within the new laws of decentralization with opportunity given the quarter heads to develop their quarter areas and municipality. The Bamenda II Council being the most hospitable municipality and a cosmopolitan council area will invest 640 million francs for investment projects within the municipality to be carried out in Mbatu, Mankon, Nchomba and Nsongwa. Given the security challenges faced in the restive northwest region with Bamenda II municipality not left out, the mayor, Chenu Peter, said with the projects to develop the municipality, saw the need to dialogue with the quarter heads so as to pave a way forward for the realization of the projects. We thought it very necessary that with the law of desolation, we should involve everybody. That's why the quarter head that is the main stakeholders of this development. So that's why we brought them together so we can share ideas and way to realize this project. Security being the main challenge, the mayor, Chenny Peter, appealed to the quarter heads to negotiate and call those still in the bushes to allow the council enhanced development in the municipality. Development is for everybody, the road is for everybody, the is for everybody, water is for everybody, it's not for a particular people. There's nothing like supposed to be to development, so that will allow the council to realize the project that was approved by the state. The Northwest Development Authority GM, Cletus Anya Matoya, presenting members of the Regional House of Assembly from the Bamena II Council, blessed with four representatives, assured the the quarter heads a strategy of the party and Bamenda II Council that they will have a lot of magic solution come 2021. Appeal the quarter heads help educate the population and develop their areas, unlike the DO for Bamenda II, Nicholas Nkongo. The Northwest Development Authority Medina will be assisting the mayors of Mezam, most particularly that of Bamenda II from, from where I come, and the city of Bamenda to solve this problem or moderate the problem of the roads. The road getting down to Mountain Palace. 
It is no open secret that I want to confirm. It is not just a matter of telling stories here. That project certainly will be realized. A press award of excellence was handed to the mayor, Tony Peter and the Bamela II Council as best mayor, best council in good governance and best practice by the Confederation of Anglophone Journalists for a stable and united Cameroon. Traditional dances grace the day. Still in the Northwest region, a regional conference on cultural diversity and rights in the Northwest region of Cameroon aimed at bridging the gap has come and gone. The conference was organized by Boskuda and Anoefo to evaluate the third phase of a project aimed at bringing Bororo and other local communities together. Details with Charles Kibwa. Regional Conference on Diversity and Rights in the Northwest Region of Cameroon held 26 January 2021 at the Ayaba Hotel Bamenda on bridging the gap, safeguarding peace and human rights by promoting intercultural dialogue in the Northwest Region of Cameroon. We can influence a lot of policy, we can influence uh, a lot of action, we can influence behavior change and I think this conference provides us with a platform. Organized by Moscuda and Noefo, the conference out to evaluate the third phase of the project entails bringing the Mbororos and the local communities to sit and dialogue. Funded by the European Union through United Purpose, Northwest Program Director of the Mbororo Social and Cultural Development Association, Moskuda, Sally Jango expressed the three years project initiated has resulted in greater cultural dialogue and peace. Thank God that we are able to make progress to support our partners and the collaborators. You know the idea of Cultural diversity, cultural rights, and cultural tolerance. The Yola is a new concept to so many people, especially our rural communities. And one of the things that we have done successfully is to sensitize people on the need to understand the culture of each other and know that people have rights in their culture. Even if you who is not part of that culture don't like it, they also people need to have that culture, that mindset to tolerate other people's culture so that people can live in peace. Like Northwest coordinator of Noefo, Jeng Jemen, people fully understand cultural rights because of the projects and what is expected of them. Before this project, most of the farmers, the grazers, they really did not understand why the borrowers or the non borrower crop farmers behaved in a certain way. But through this project, we're able to bring the, the women, we brought youth differently, we even brought journalists, we brought the civil society members. And together we're able to like, present to them some of those uh, differences between the both cultures and what they can do to make sure that the two cultures collab collaborate. Northwest Governor Altof Lele Lafri, who chaired the conference, described the rich cultural diversity of the Northwest region and asset, said the initiative is in line with government quest to bring back normalcy to the region. The good relationship between the rural community and the natives uh, will certainly increase the coming back to the normalcy in the Northwest region. And therefore, congratulating Boscuda and Westford, alongside the other partners, the European Union, Wow, this Key highlights of the event was the presentation and testimony by some beneficiaries of the project and stakeholders in promoting intercultural dialogue. About 2,500 kids have benefited from a humanitarian outreach sponsored by footballer Samwe Etofis. This was during a three-day visit to the far north region of the country. Ali Sama has more in the following report. Samuel Eto's three-day tour of the far north region was geared at putting a smile on the faces of the most vulnerable in that part of the country badly hit by the Boko Haram insurgency for almost a decade. The visits which began on Tuesday 26th and ends today Thursday 28th January saw the football legend and president of the Eto Foundation Torin, Marua and Garua offering humanitarian support to about 2,500 kids including school children in the Pete and Bogo subdivision affected by the war against terrorists at Boko Haram. Thus, fulfilling the goal of his mission to the far north, 
acting under the banner of the Eto Foundation, involved in humanitarian gestures to the most needy with the goal of protecting children and young people, providing emergency aid and encouraging education, basic health and social inclusion for the less privileged in order to help them create opportunities for the future. While in Marua, Samuel Etofis also visited soldiers of the Rapid Intervention Battalion B with words of encouragement as they continue to battle Boko Haram since 2014. The football icon also paid a visit to far North Governor Mijiawa Bakari as well as the Lamido of Marua, Bakari Yerima Buba, during which both men reportedly discussed the humanitarian situation in the region caused by the Boko Haram war, among other things. The former Indomitable Lions captain and international football icon concluded his visit today in Marua, where he donated sporting equipment to regional league clubs of the far north, as well as presided over the finals of a Samuel Eto tournament organized in Bogo subdivision. Thanks, Eileen Sama. You're watching the 6.30 Prime News on my major prime. A teacher at uh, Antijo Dignified Bilingual Nigerian Primary School, Duala, has been laid to rest. She reportedly uh, died following a malaise sustained from slaps received from her pupil's parents who confessed to have acted in anger after an incident involving the uh, pupil. Uh, my media prime visited the institution or the school to find out what led to this uh, incident. Dolly Ngonde reports. Pupils of Nerji 2 at the anti Joe bilingual Nerji and primary school Duala Littoral region of Cameroon will no longer see the smiling face again tutoring them following the death and burial of their teacher as this witness now recounts. It happened on, it was the, with the children in class. As they were making noise, so she decided to hit the, the beans. She happened to hit one of the child and give a small cut on the head. Unfortunately, she did not go with the child to the office in order that they could clean the child's head. When the parent of the child saw it, he came and then the child was taken care of and we knew that that was the end of the problem. But was this really the end of the problem? The next day, which was Wednesday, the father of the said child came that morning, immediately at we were entering the classroom after devotion. The father came with the child and the father was looking for the teacher. The parent went into the teacher's classroom and wanted to hit the lady in class. On her part, all attempts to stop the said Mr. Ngamini from trespassing administrative orders proved futile. I saw the parent entering. I rushed outside in order to block her not to enter the class. That's when she was asking the child, is this your teacher? The child said no. As I was telling him to go outside and then that we should not, that he, should, he does no right to come in to the teacher's classroom to just begin to ask questions in that manner. As he was, I was pushing him to stand outside, they said, Madam, she was coming after me. Immediately, the Madam came, the child pointed that this is the Madam. So the man held the Madam and then slapped her twice on the left jaw. So then, fourthly, one of my colleagues, he ran into the man and held him. So that's how we separated. There was no further beating. Emanating from two slaps, the story unfortunately now takes a sadder twist. See, the following morning, Madam came to school and then she started misbehaving. She was not talking normally and that's how we had to rush with her home and then consulted the, and the family had to rush with her to the hospital. Three days after the deed had been done, all measures to contact the perpetrator were successful not until the death of the now deceased teacher was announced. So the man accepted. I did it but I didn't do it with intention. That it was just anger. So the, the man said, okay, if that be the case, then you follow us to the hospital so that you can see the case, how he's doing, how she's doing. Maybe you just talk some word to her, it'll be okay. So since then, we, they, they exchanged contact, and that's how the, the man went there once, that same day, and then the following day, though he did not see the, the said brother. So since then to today, we have not seen the man, and we don't know anything, but the colleague is dead, and... We are buried. Ah. As of now, Mr. Ngameni Nathan, the father to the injured pupil, still remains at large. Meanwhile, the Wuri Divisional Inspectorate of Basic Education is handling the matter which is expected to be channeled to the judiciary. Etape Conteng has sports news compiled in the French language. La Guinée a validé son biais pour les quarts de finale du champ 2020 en faisant match nul hier mercredi 
contre la Tanzanie, deux buts partout sur la pelouse du stade de la réunification du Douala. À la quatrième minute du jeu, la formation guinéenne inscrit son premier but sur pénalty tiré par l'attaquant Yakuba Nyanga Bari, joueur du Oronia Athletic Club en Guinée. Pénalty causé par la main de Lianga dans la surface de réparation. Malgré la pression de l'adversaire, la Tanzanie ne s'est pas laissé faire. À la 23e minute, son défenseur Baraka Majorogo marque le premier but de sa formation sportive. Les 45 premières minutes se sont écoulées avec un score d'égalité. Du retour des vestiaires, malgré la maîtrise de jeu des Guinéens, les Tanzaniens les supprennent en mettant au fond de leur filet un second but à la 69e minute par la tête de son défenseur, Edouard Charles Manyama, alimenté d'un corner bien centré par son coéquipier. À ce niveau, la Tanzanie était déjà qualifiée, mais que non, à la 82e minute, l'excellent attaquant de la sélection guinéenne vient égaliser le score avec un but marqué par la tête. La Guinée est ainsi qualifiée au quart de finale en occupant la première place du groupe D avec 5 points. Le 31 janvier 2021, elle jouera contre le Rwanda, deuxième du pool C. Par ailleurs, au stade de Limbi, où s'est joué un autre match hier soir, la Namibie rentre à cause du nul avec la Zambie, zéro but partout. Deuxième du pool D, les Chipolo Polo affronteront le Maroc toujours le 31 de ce mois au stade de la réunification de Douala. That's it for today's edition of Prime News on my media prime. Thanks for being a part. Desmond Ngoa produced the news coordinated by Faith Tata Birunyo. My name is Genda Pelgin Blanche King. Until we meet again tomorrow, stay tuned to my media prime at 7 p.m. Cameroon time. Prime R will be live with Kum Lunat. Immediately after Prime R, you'd have prime spots with uh, a top content. Stay in company of uh, good programs only on the African Eye. Good night. <laughs>